Uh, so the next presenter is Victor uh, Mascherin, and he's from TU Dresden. Uh, he's presenting on 3D printing with carbon reinforced concrete. Okay, thank you, Eric. Eric, uh, yeah, thank you so much. So my name is Victor Mischerin from TU Dresden in Germany. And it's my pleasure to join this uh, reinforcement party. And um, I'm going to talk uh, about a carbon fiber reinforcement in the context of uh, the digital fabrication with concrete. But actually I would like to start uh, with uh, classification framework. Since we just finished uh, the paper, or rather the paper is just published, and I believe it's really worth to give you some insights in this work. Um, actually, um, the motivation was uh, kind of to continue the work started earlier in uh, RILEM. Uh, we prepared to, in a nice international group. You see here uh, the paper uh, with all the names and it's open access. So please uh, feel free just to download this paper from internet. So uh, what this paper actually had it is uh, to classify the processes and not just additive uh, manufacturing processes, but also other processes. And this gives really uh, the possibility to describe in clear terms, any digital fabrication process with concrete. But it's not what I'm going to talk about here. So uh, those days we uh, concentrate really on placement of concrete on a digital fabrication with concrete without uh, paying much attention to reinforcement. So in the next step, we again gathered ourselves in a nice international group and we uh, made a review of various uh, processes which are used to integrate reinforcement. And I will give you first a, uh, an overview. And uh, this overview follows the principle of technology. So it's not about the uh, structural design or whatever else, it's about technology. So the first thing we said, it's, uh, well, possibility to add fiber during mixing which is obviously a pre-process. And yesterday we saw a lot of very nice examples of the colleagues from all over the world who use fiber as a possibility to reinforce concrete. And fortunately, nowadays we really have materials like strain and and cement-based materials, which even with 1% or 1.5% of polymeric fiber provides uh, the uh, behavior like strain hardening. So in tension, you have really increase in tensile stresses with uh, increase in strains and uh, having behavior like this, it's you can go into design using this uh, material behavior for structural design. Okay, um, the next possibility is you place first reinforcement, and then uh, in case this reinforcement with concrete. Now, obviously it's a two-step process. So, um, and this is uh, the subdivision we again are going to make in the classification as you will see right away. So it's another possibility, uh, again, place in first the cage of reinforcement in a conventional way. And then in this case, applying concrete by spraying. So in both these cases, we don't have a supporting action of reinforcement. It means so concrete could be placed also without any reinforcement. So from the point of view of technology, reinforcement uh, doesn't help concrete kind of uh, to uh, carry itself, but it can of course be used. This is the two examples um, uh, where we use uh, textile reinforcement as a, a kind of a support to concrete. So first reinforcement, then concrete. And if you think about uh, the approach mesh mold uh, presented uh, just uh, by uh, the speaker before me, uh, by, by uh, Jaime, uh, then you also would, uh, of course, uh, put this uh, method in this category. So again, two-step process, in this case, uh, uh, kind of a, um, specific point is support to concrete. Well, another possibility is first uh, to place concrete and then 
at reinforcement. Uh, so uh, it's again relates to concrete shaping process. So after concrete shaping, we add reinforcement. This is what we use in our approach in Concrete 3 d So a massive wall made of concrete first, and then we placed here a layer of reinforcement. In this example, the concrete was applied in a conventional manner. So I mean, this concrete cover, but uh, at the moment we uh, implementing our um, uh, uh, our patent uh, where we apply uh, this kind of uh, cover layer layer by layer uh, using additive technology. You can do it also with uh, textile, with carbon textile, as shown in this example. And another category is again after concrete shaping by by assembling. And this is example from Eidhofen. Uh, the colleagues used. Um, uh, concrete 3D printing by layered extrusion to produce these uh, segments. And then in the next step, they assembled the segments and it was press tracing uh, with, um, uh, uh, with, with cables. And again, it's two-step process. Okay, maybe you find also the third step here, but anyway, um, it's uh, uh, again a way how we characterize. Well, of a particular interest, of course, if we can manage to do uh, everything in one step. And in this case, it's really about additive manufacturing where we can implement or try to implement a reinforcement more or less directly into the process. So one example is placement of reinforcement between the layers during concrete shaping, uh, which is uh, technically not single step, but uh, with respect to uh, uh, to, to shaping of reinforcement. So we are still in, in a fresh state. So we say it's a contiguous process. So it's single step process consisting of some little sum processes. So it can be after each layer of concrete or uh, every two layers or every 10 layers or whatever. So it's another example you can, of course, place here, not just uh, steel reinforcement, but also carbon. Uh, yarn, so carbon bars or uh, this kind of uh, mesh, again, textile, whatever. So um, you can also place um, some more complex mesh, for example, improving here the bond between the layers or, or whatever. Again, contiguous process. Another um, possibility uh, to apply reinforcement in a contiguous process is um, by uh, cross layers enhancement encasement during concrete shaping. In this case, you see that a reinforcement is led through the nozzle and then encased uh, by concrete so that we can again um, apply here concrete layer by layer and reinforcement layer by layer. Uh, the benefit of this approach uh, suggested by the colleagues from Australia uh, so that we can uh, improvement into the interlayer bond, so we can transfer here tensile stresses between the layers in the vertical direction quite nicely. So uh, also this uh, suggestion by our colleagues from Aachen in Germany uh, goes in the same direction. In this case, it's some welding of uh, little pieces of reinforcement and eventual encasement uh, by concrete. So in the perspective, it should go in uh, more or less kind of one single process. At the moment, it's still uh, uh, two steps, but in the perspective, the colleagues want to do it in one step. Okay, um, then we have um, another possibility, in this case, also cross layer, but by penetration of reinforcement during concrete shaping. Uh, you can use here pins or nails uh, as presented yesterday by Arnaud Perot or uh, the method suggested by the colleagues from Eidhofen, uh, Frank de Bos and uh, his group, uh, by using here some screws. Again, fresh concrete, so this is why we consider this as a single step process, but a congenious one. So um, uh, examples for simultaneous process, again in one step, is entrainment of uh, reinforcement into concrete filaments. Here on the left side, uh, a proposal also implemented in the praxis uh, by a game group from Eidhofen, where a metal cable is uh, 
here introduced directly into filament and uh, yeah, laid down together with the filament. So what we use in Dresden is um, another material. So it's uh, carbon yarn or rather up to six carbon yarns in, in one go. And uh, again, uh, they're introduced directly into filament. Okay, so this is a little overview. Of course, I could show more examples, but now to the classification. So what we said, uh, we first take uh, this concrete process as a um, uh, process subclass, actually, of the previous classification by Rylam, and then we define the process type for introduction of the reinforcement, if it's a, a pre-process or single-step process or multiple-step process. Okay, well, for uh, pre-processes, um, yeah, obviously just possibility to introduce short fiber as a ready mix or dry mix. Uh, and of course, uh, it's during mixing when we reinforce fiber. So for the single step process characteristic is that we introduce reinforcement during concrete shaping. And this is for uh, methods which we identify. And uh, you see that here is more than one possibility. So we can use, for example, for entrainment, we can uh, work with cables or yarns, but we can also introduce short fiber or meshes uh, or textiles. And the same for other methods. You see there are some options with respect to the geometry. And of course, there are also options with respect to the materials. Uh, we can use uh, steel, we can use uh, carbon, we can use uh, glass, fiber, or whatever. So, and then uh, alternatively, we can go to two step processes. Uh, which are not necessarily additive. It can be uh, different types of digitized uh, processes. And uh, we, um, differ, so we, we identify here as a processes uh, which, uh, where we use uh, uh, placement of reinforcement prior to concrete shaping and after concrete shaping. Again, we have some subclasses here, support to concrete or no support to concrete, or here, uh, uh, when we place reinforcement after hardening of concrete um, on one piece, or we assemble the printed pieces or uh, pieces made by some other digital methods, and then we assemble it and then use uh, kind of reinforcement, for example, press stressed reinforcement. Okay, um, again, it's a, a published paper. Um, you can find it here. So if you have some difficulties uh, to attend this paper, just let me know. Um, in the first few days of the publication, we can distribute uh, some access uh, to this publication. Um, okay, and now I come to carbon reinforcement. And uh, first, why our interest to carbon reinforcement? Well, first of all, it's uh, because of sustainability. Nowadays, uh, concrete construction is really mass construction with uh, massive use of uh, resources. And if you go to uh, carbon reinforced concrete, we can spare a lot of uh, cement, a lot of um, aggregates. So we go to much slender elements because uh, this kind of reinforcement is uh, stronger, so it can be a higher tensile um, uh, stresses, but also it doesn't need protection against corrosion because it's uh, absolutely uh, inert. So uh, some examples of use of this reinforcement, uh, but I don't want to go here into details. We see it's a strengthening, it's uh, some slender elements, etc. So what I want to emphasize that uh, you never use actually carbon reinforcement without any uh, polymer coating or impregnation. Why? Because otherwise uh, you would have a very poor bond between these yarns and, uh, and, and concrete matrix uh, on the first place, but also you would have a pretty uh, um, much difficulty in handling this kind of textile. So uh, what is used now uh, as a kind of a standard is polymer impregnation. And this is what we uh, say, okay, it's fine, but uh, this technology has also some limitations, right? So first of all, if we think about polymer impregnation, we think about lower temperature uh, resistance in comparison to, well, any other type of reinforcement. So we would go for higher 
temperature resistant. Uh, we want to improve the bond because actually Permia had, has no really great bond to, uh, to the uh, concrete matrix. And then um, we also think of course about durability and sustainability. So polymer and concrete can be durable, but not every polymer is, and we don't have really much experience with that. Um, and um, maybe the most important point for today is the processability. So we look how easy we can process really this kind of reinforcement with novel technologies. And this is why we actually went to the solution uh, to uh, say goodbye to, to polymers and go for mineral bond carbon fiber reinforcement. So um, we developed this technology a few years ago. Uh, this is one of the first publication on this subject. And uh, the trick is that we use a really very, very, very fine suspension. Uh, the details you can find, for example, in this paper. And we have uh, special technology for impregnating, which enables really to have a very homogeneous impregnation of this fiber. So just uh, think that in a, um, a bar like this uh, of eight millimeter diameter, you have half a million of uh, individual filaments, so carbon filaments. So you have a lot of uh, <laughs> kind of uh, um, filaments which you all should uh, separate and you need uh, the bond material between the filaments and not uh, kind of uh, allowed to large bundles of filaments. So for this, you need, of course, a very nice um, well distribution of these filaments and for this you need uh, good technology so uh, these are some products uh, we work with a cement uh, based suspension but we also work with uh, geopolymer suspension again you can find some information in this paper um, what i want to show you some examples of the technology so this is what we do to make uh, first uh, one dimensional reinforcement. So basically bringing some individual yarns after uh, impregnation together to these bars and you see that everything works automatically and the guys in the background, they just chat, uh, which is good. So um, the second step was to go for 2D reinforcement. And again, so it's a computerized uh, or a digitized process supported by a computer. Um, and uh, as a, and for the day, we have a kind of a mesh, which looks uh, like an ordinary mesh, but it's done automatically and it's done of this new types of material. So carbon reinforcement impregnated with mineral binder. So uh, then we try to get out of uh, a plane. So first going for shell structures. And in this case, we use some uh, support. Uh, so in the uh, uh, there are following steps, we want to reduce this uh, supporting action uh, by uh, kind of nails you have here, uh, but uh, uh, at the moment I cannot present this work here. So again, this is a uh, uh, yeah, structure uh, after uh, the process is uh, performed and uh, some hardening occurs. Accurate. And uh, then we went for three dimensional reinforcement. In this case, it's a little bit funny because actually the, well, I would say print head uh, is just uh, on one place. And what we move is here the frame actually, uh, like uh, wrapping this uh, yarns over, the, over this um, frame. So again, at the end of the day, we have some cage of reinforcement. And if you look, here on the weight, it's uh, less than one tenth in comparison to uh, the steel cage, which would carry the same loads. So, which means so we have here actually much lighter reinforcement. And on top of on that, actually, it's uh, a non-corrosive reinforcement. So it means that also durability of such uh, a concrete structure would be much higher in comparison to the steel reinforcement structures. Okay, so some examples and uh, some people from my group uh, probably present also, you can make an umbrella of this type of reinforcement or whatever else. Um, and then we went uh, one step further. Uh, this is a paper published last year where we uh, explain different concept how to uh, use this type of reinforcement for additive manufacturing this concrete. 
And in the meantime, we also introduced some of these concepts um, like uh, shown in this video. So you see here um, actually where we place first reinforcement between layers. It has some uh, benefits, uh, but not only, and all this is again discussed in the paper I just mentioned. So um, in the second step, we uh, introduce a reinforcement directly into filaments. And again, it has some benefits and some drawbacks. And uh, where we see benefits of this introduction of a reinforcement directly into filaments, when we go and me measure mechanical performance, in this case, indeed, if you compare uh, both cases, you see, well, uh, well, of course, better than plain concrete for sure. Uh, but uh, what you see, um, even if we get uh, the same maximum force level in both cases, obviously, uh, in the case when we entrain reinforcement directly into fil filaments, it starts acting uh, earlier, and actually, we we get uh, a kind of stiffer response and uh, also kind of a plateau here, which looks uh, good for, for, again, design. Um, so it's, at the moment, it seems to be a, a little bit a better approach. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the geometry was not perfectly the same. Also, the quality of um, yarns we introduced here was a little bit different. In both cases, uh, again, I cannot do, go into detail. Uh, but it, it seems that it works. It also worked nicely in the unaxial tensile test. We uh, get here multiple cracking, which is a good sign, of course. We have strain hardening materials, obviously, even with uh, relatively low degree of reinforcement. Enforcement. So at the moment, we are working on increasing the um, reinforcement degree to get even a better performance. Well, um, this is uh, more or less the end of my presentation. Just me mentioned that we are about to start two new RILEM technical committee on 3D concrete printing, one led by Nicolas Roussel, who chaired also the previous committee. And the first one is focusing on fresh printable cement-based materials, on characterization, on uh, test methods, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, the kickoff meeting will be in about a week uh, on April uh, 9th uh, uh, before lunch, which is not very good time for uh, people living in the US. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, the time given here. It's uh, uh, here Paris time or, or Berlin time. So the second committee, uh, this is uh, organized by uh, Frank uh, Boss, who will be the next presenter, and myself. Uh, it's on uh, hardened concrete, um, uh, testing hardened concrete, but also testing uh, printed structures. And um, uh, again, in the same day, we organize kickoff meeting. You are all welcome to join. It's a much uh, nicer time for you guys. It's in the afternoon uh, in Paris or so early morning uh, in in uh, US. Um, and so, if you have interest, you just uh, drop a line uh, to uh, myself. Um, so uh, this is my email address, or to Frank uh, Boss, who will present next. And uh, so we will send you the invitation. So thank you so much for listening and uh, to organize of this session. Guys, uh, it wasn't necessary to send the flowers, but thank you so much. Uh, on 1st April, it's really a very good gesture. Thank you so much. Thank you, Victor.